What is good Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to talk about what's going on with Tesla stock and break down some very important levels. I'm also going to break down some resistance on Tesla and support and what could end up playing out for the month of December, given what just happened on Friday. But before I begin the devil's information, before I talk about what's going on with Tesla and SPY, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire Tesla community as a whole. Anyways, let's talk about what's going on with the market and Tesla. Tesla had a very, very interesting day on Friday as this thing continued to sell off, but it managed to hold its support, and then we ended up getting a bounce thanks to Jerome Powell's speech. So the question is, what's going on? Why on earth is the market holding up like this? And what could play out for the month of December? Now, initially, as I said earlier, I was thinking that there were many signals suggesting that the market could slow down, especially when you look at the PPO on SPY and the fact that this thing was very overbought. However, one thing that's worth noting is that a lot of retail were also expecting the same thing. And we ended up seeing a lot of institutions just continuing to short. A lot of shorts began to pile in on both sides and the market makers saw an opportunity in the process. So with many technicals and all these different signals, suggesting that there was going to be a cool down coming. Many of us suggested and thought that, you know, Jerome Powell giving a speech could be another catalyst. We just have to watch and see what, what would happen. And instead, when Powell made his announcements about the potential pause, about the fact that the data is looking quite decent, things went absolutely berserk. And we ended up seeing, you know, a lot of these uh, buyers stepping in that caused the market to squeeze. So, what happened and what's going to happen for the next couple of weeks, I just want to note that for Friday, if you haven't seen this already, I just want to mention that we have just over 340,000 calls expiring and we have over 848,000 puts expiring. So a 2.47 put to call ratio, majority positions are in favor of the puts. And then for the next week, right, we have about uh, this is 1.7 plus almost 1.8 million calls expiring and over 4 million puts expiring with the 2.3 puts to call ratio. The majority of people have puts for the next week. That's the second week of December. For the third Friday of December, we have almost 100. This is actually like very close to 100,000 calls expiring and over 300 and 28,000 of the puts expiring with the 3.27 puts to call ratio. The majority of people have puts for December 29th. It's the same thing, uh, just over 500,000 calls. And then we have over 850,000 puts expiring with a 1.69 put to call ratio. So there are a bunch of puts expiring every single week on SPY. The market makers are just squeezing shorts over and over and over again. It's pretty wild. And with this happening, Okay, if they continue this trend, we could see even more upside in the markets that leads to Tesla continuing to push. Now, with Jerome Powell hinting at the Fed potentially pausing again in December, they said they have to look at the data, but so far there's like no piece of data that forces them to have to like raise rates thus far. And Powell started even talking about potentially cutting rates uh, in the future. He just said that talks about it are premature, but they are open to cutting in 2024. Uh, but, but they have to see what the data suggests and all that first. But the fact that he mentioned that, the fact that he's talking about potentially cutting, the fact that the guy was talking more about them like not raising rates and uh, most likely not doing it again, the fact that this guy, you know, he mentioned that more rate hikes are a possibility, but they're unlikely uh, so far just based off the current data. But they'll have to see what the future data suggests. The fact that he's saying things like this got the market hyped. The market thinks the Fed is going to pause in December, so we just start to see a continuation of the short squeeze. So with the, the market thinking that the Fed is going to most likely pause, they're saying there's a 97% chance of that happening. The market is in parabolic mode. The, the market makers are just squeezing more shorts, and the market's getting very excited. Tesla fell to close below 230, so this thing is looking bullish. But here's what could play out for the rest of December. There are just a couple of possibilities I want to go over. One of them could be that Tesla just maintains this wedge. And this is actually very realistic, but we could just go back and forth. Maybe we fail because we have this like this blue trend line right here, which is going to be our key resistance to watch for. If we just continue to you know go back and forth like this, we could just see this thing uptrend and form a rising wedge approaching the end of the year. That's one possibility. 
Uh, but that would only take us into like 260 to end the year. And that does not seem like, uh, you know, it's that far as far as Tesla could move towards. We have this gap up here around this like 300 area. I don't think it's going to pump that hard unless we end up breaking above 270. Uh, but for now, what I'm going to say is this. Watch and see if Tesla could break these resistance levels. Can we even break above the orange resistance? If we break the orange resistance, it could break out even more. And we're going to be looking for a move towards like 260 plus within the next two weeks. So it could happen even sooner than expected for a massive breakout if we get that break. And we could just slowly start uptrending to end the year for a very, very nice push with the markets. That is another possibility. And then if you want to be bearish, right, if you want to be bearish on Tesla, you need to see this white trend line down here break. So see how we like touched the, the white trend line. We bounced, we bounced. Uh, we didn't come close to it here. We came kind of close. We already bounced. Then we bounced here. So if you want to be bearish, you need to see Tesla do something like this where it comes up and then just starts sinking. And we end up just losing 230. That's what's going to be bearish for Tesla. And then it's going to come down to fill the gap at 225. Uh, but I don't see that happening, right? It looks very unlikely unless we get a really bad piece of news. I mentioned to you all that Tesla should pump approaching the Cybertruck event that happened. And I told you there was a sell-off coming. That also happened. But Tesla ended up holding support. So, so far, it's looking quite decent and there is potential for upside. Now, what about for SPY? What on earth are my thoughts on SPY? SPY is also looking quite decent. So during the after hours, this thing got very close to 460 trying to break out. If it breaks 460, if that happens, okay, like I mentioned earlier, when you look at SPY on the weekly time frame, now it's looking like there's like a this cup and handle like formation. We're about to get the breakouts. And if we break 460, 467 is going to be our next level. If we break 4, uh, 467, this thing might just approach all-time highs and just continue to slowly rally to end the year before we get a sell-off. Or what could happen is if there's a rejection off 460, we could see this come back down to where the orange trend line is and chop a bit before it slowly uptrends. But it looks like the market is very strong. And it doesn't look like it wants to sell off. So, you know, at, at this point, guys, with all this going on, make sure you watch 460. Let's see if we break it or not. If we break it, we're going to be really bullish. If we fail to break it, we could pull back a bit and then break it later. But I just want to note that from this point, even though we had a lot of sell signals in the past, Jerome Powell caused a lot of them to invalidate. It is not too late to trade in the market. There's always room for up and down and plays that you can make. So watch the trend and see if we get that break. I also want to add that there's always opportunity and wait and see if the opportunity comes to us to make better moves. So with that being said, there's opportunity for more upside. There's opportunity for us to make money. And it's not necessarily the end. You could still get in and make crazy money if you learn how to play this right. But be patient and see if they get the break. Once again, when it comes to the way the market moves, sometimes unexpected things could happen. Like I always use the analogy where I tell you that there could be a day where the market looks really bullish and I'm super, super bullish. I released a video on bullish. Then all of a sudden, a few hours pass. And then, you know, there's a new pandemic. Or there's a new war that starts. And all of a sudden, the market just sinks despite all the bullish. Excuse me. Sorry, guys. I think I just kicked something. Uh, despite all the bullish signals that end up appearing. Uh, you know, it, it's pretty crazy, right? It's pretty crazy how the market uh, can move. So I just wanted to call that out. But if, if things like this happen... Just know that all we could really do is react to them and just know the market is trying to push up higher. So it still looks bullish and we will see if we continue to break out. But make sure you watch that 260 resistance on SPY. Watch and see if Tesla could try to get above 242. If it manages to achieve that, there could be even more upside coming. So watch your levels, guys. Do what you have to do. We'll see if Tesla could try to break out. The trend is still favoring the bulls a bit more, although Tesla is kind of like shaky. Uh, that's because of what we just saw with the Cybertruck event. But I think that there could be an end of the year squeeze coming and we could just continue to see these market makers manipulate the charts. It was very tricky because SPY was just green and green and green over and over again, five weeks in a row of just straight up pushing with no stop, no, excuse me, signs of stopping. We have a bullish cross in the PPO now. This chart is looking more bullish. If we break 460, we're going to turn more bullish. We're very close to doing so. And there could be more upside coming. Jerome Powell may have opened the gates for more upside. Thank you, Jerome Powell, for squeezing more shorts. Uh, you know, some people argue that he's the biggest market maker in the world. 
Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. I'm just, I'm just, you know, saying this hypothetically. Uh, with that being said, there could be more upside coming. The market could just continue to squeeze as time goes on. But I still believe that later on in 2024, that's when the pullback could come if it doesn't come this year. And just be prepared for all of that uh, for the remainder of the year. With that said, thank you all so much for listening. Have a great day. Make sure you watch those levels and just go over these scenarios I kind of drew, drew out in the charts for Tesla. And please, please, please rem remember to be as calm, cool, and collected as possible. It's a very, very tricky market. The market's designed to trick us, but all we can really do is react and then just manage risks very well, not financial advice, no matter what they try to throw our way. All right, guys, I appreciate everyone. Please have an absolutely incredible we weekend and just know that there is still some upside potential for Tesla. All right, have a great day. Tesla to the moon because the long term is still very bright and peace out.